Hi everyone, welcome back to Skills for Climbing. I just wanted to put a little plug in here at the beginning of the video uh, because we've just come out with our first paid content, which is uh, a, an instructional series on rappelling. It's very in-depth, uh, much more in-depth than most recreational climbers will have seen. Uh, we cover a lot of material, including rappelling on skinny, skinny ropes, like, like your wrap lines. Um, we also cover using the Beal Escaper. We cover techniques for ascending the rope if you need to do some self-rescue on rappel, and lots of ways of managing the rope in the event that there's wind or an incoming storm, or if you need to rappel quickly. We even go over some techniques that are as fast or faster than simul rappelling and significantly safer. So if you're interested in this content, you can go ahead and take a look over at Skills for Climbing. That's S K. I-L-L-S-F-O-R-C-L-I-M-B-I-N-G dot com uh, and you'll look on that site and you'll find there's a paid content link and just go there and find the video on repelling. Thanks so much and I hope you enjoy more of our free content here. Samo rappelling is a technique where two people rappel while being counterbalanced through an anchor. This is commonly done if people are trying to rappel many pitches in a row, feeling that this technique might be faster. It's also done for team building or to build trust with your partner, because if any person unloads the system unexpectedly, it's possible the other person could be seriously injured or in some cases, like if the device comes free of the system or there's not enough friction in one of the partner's devices, the other person could actually be killed. Here we're going to take a look at the simul repelling setup. You can see we have two climbers on opposite sides of an anchor where the rope has been threaded through and they are counterbalanced. It's very important that the climbers are roughly the same weight. You can have differences of say 50 to 80 pounds in the climbers because there's a fair amount of friction at the anchor, but once you start getting weight differences greater than that, it's possible that the heavier climber will start to pull the rope through the rappel point while the lighter climber gets pulled up toward the rappel point. If this happens, of course, the lighter climber can continue to rappel, but you'll end up with uneven ends of the rope. And this may make it impossible for you to reach your ledge that you're rappelling to. Or if you're in a very unfortunate situation and you haven't closed the end of your system, like put a barrel knot, like a stopper knot in the end, or you're not tied into the end of the rope, then it drastically increases the chance that you could rappel off the ends of your ropes. One way to mitigate this to some degree is to attach a sling between the two climbers. So if one person is starting to get pulled up, toward the anchor, it, this sling will stop them. Another thing that most people simul repelling will do is they will back up their system in some way, such as using a third hand that we've discussed throughout this video, or using a device such as a grigri, which automatically locks if someone were to let go of the brake strand. So here's a little stop motion of two simul repellers where nothing goes wrong in the system and they both start the repel and finish the repel together unloading the system at exactly the same time. And now we can see what happens if one of the repellers arrives at a stance and immediately unloads or unweights the system while at the same time releasing their brake hand on their ATC. Here the other climber instantly drops and if the system isn't closed, then the rope will simply fling through the device and then through the anchor on the top, sending the other climber all the way to the ground. Another common scenario here is when climbers are rappelling on a grigri, one of them reaches an anchor and pulls back on the lever on the grigri to give themselves slack so they're not getting that wedgie. But when they do that, it's also sending slack up and through the anchor to the other climber and that other climber will start to fall. In summary, there are many drawbacks to simul rappelling. The first and most important it is that it's dangerous. Many fatal accidents have resulted from simul repelling errors. Another is it's difficult to reascend if you miss an anchor because you have to coordinate your ascent with your partner and you both have to be sure to keep your weight on the rope the entire time you reascend. Traversing repels are also 
particularly awkward when you're trying to coordinate these with a partner. And additionally, time savings are oftentimes minimal when compared to other repelling methods, even on routes with more than 20 repels. And finally, other repelling methods can be both faster and less dangerous than simul repelling. Let's take a look at one of those methods right now. Okay, so right now we have reached another rappel station, and this is always a good idea. You see this sort of J shape going up to an overhand on a bite with both strands. This locks in the system, so it's impossible for my partner to pass down this pass by this station, which may create a need for them to reascend. It also allows me to open up the end of the system and untie these knots and start threading the rope so that we don't forget to get these knots out. Um, when we pull it. So it, it kind of does double duty. And the triple duty it does is if this is a traversing rappel, we had one station way off to the right and this next station was, or sorry, way off to the left and this next station was on the right hand side of the cliff. This loop could be quite long and when my partner reaches the bottom of it, I can simply grab it and pull them over and they could even almost be hands-free on their device because they're in this trapped loop. So. Um, knowing this J system can be a, a really nice thing um, for adding security and efficiency to your repelling. Okay, so I've got one end and I can immediately thread it or since both of us are connected, I can also take this out and open this up and see which end is gonna be the easiest to pull here. Okay. Right, so I can see that this end right here is gonna be a little easier to pull. So I'm gonna thread this and again, oftentimes I'll clip this into myself, like an overhand on a bite really tightened or figure eight on a bite tightened. But for clarity here, I'm just gonna put in a barrel knot because I think it'll be easier to see what's going on. I'm going to show a system for repelling that is oftentimes faster than simul repelling and much, much safer. Simul repelling has a lot of drawbacks and safety is certainly the biggest of the drawbacks of simul repelling. Um, awkwardness or lack of comfort might be the next one. So I'm gonna start stacking this on my harness and nice small coils here. And then I'm gonna start pulling. So I'll pull my rope just like normal. So I'm gonna to continue to stack this. And as I stack, I'm looking for the middle of the rope. So, just like before, whoops, rope coming down, rope. Okay, so just like before, I can tie an overhand knot here, which fixes the strand. But in this case, I'm going to do a clove hitch instead. I'm gonna do a clove hitch on a locking carabiner, just like this. And the clove hitch is gonna be a double clove hitch. One and two. We'll see why I'm doing the clove hitch in just a second. I clip that in. Okay, so that's cinched down now. And I can now take this single strand. Let's see if I can move this out of the way. Make this a little bit more clear. Well, my friend is organizing all this rope that's draped around us. I can simply take this strand that is already ready to throw and throw that down the cliff. Okay, there it goes. And now we have this strand, right? That's under tension. This strand is attached and fixed to a clove hitch right here, which means I could immediately start to repel while my partner deals with this rope. That means by the time the other end of the rope is ready to throw, I'll oftentimes already be down at the second repel, which means it's much faster than simul repelling. Okay, and the reason I'm using a clove hitch here to fix it is after the clove hitch is weighted up, especially a double-stranded clove hitch, it's still pretty easy to pop this out instead of doing an overhand on a bite or a figure eight on a bite, which after it's been under tension, can be really hard to pop out. So there's a knot in the end of this already. My friend's job is to make sure there's a knot in the end of the other one. I'm gonna repel a single strand and my friend who I'm climbing with is going to repel a double strand just like normal and unfix this before they repel. So I'll just show. So I'm gonna repel this single strand. 
we had one more person we could show my my buddy untangling the other rope and getting it ready to go while I get myself down the cliff. There we go, so I'm on rappel here. I double check. Yes, it's biting. I come out. Repel that single rope while my buddy finishes taking care of this rope and gets it ready to throw.